Folks, we have a great guest on with us. Tamina Sunning is part of the great reboot that if you caught the premiere of Jack Bauer's Return, 24, Live Another Day. She's uh, also got a great role that was on uh, Kevin Bacon's show that was called The Following, and we're great to have her on the show. How are you doing this morning? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pretty exciting time for you. A couple of great shows back-to-back like this and a lot of other projects as well we can talk about, but... What is it like to be part of a show like 24, which is such an incredible legacy? You know, I've got to say, I was always pretty obsessed, obsessed with the show. So actually working with the team, I mean, it's like a little dream come true. Yeah, it's, it's just an incredible thing. I think fans are so excited about it. The uh, the premiere uh, seemed like it was very well received and that sort of thing. It's set in London. Um, it is. T- tell us a little bit about your character and uh, you know what people can know. Um, well, obviously, I can't really reveal too much because I, I um, appear on the show in two weeks' time, I, I believe. So I have to keep it a little bit quiet. But um, I'm, I'm amongst all, all the, all the fun stuff that's happening with the characters. And um, oh, I can't really reveal too much as much as I'm dying to. I understand. No, it's okay. We understand. It's kind of like we have to play a cat and mouse game with uh, what we're allowed to say, what we're not allowed to say. Um, yeah. What can you what can you say about working with some of the cast and what, what that's been like? Um, just so professional yet so friendly. Um, it's it's, it's like another day in the office. Mm-hmm. You know, you bump into everybody when you're in hair and makeup, and it's you're just catching up with them, and then all of a sudden everyone turns good or bad when you're on set. It's great. <laughs> The good guys and the bad guys are dying. Yeah. Their makeup done together. Next thing you know, there's explosions. Everyone's back together. That's a really kind of a cool backdrop to these shows that uh, sometimes people don't get their head around. <laughs> what uh, what is it like to, to on a set like this? Because 24 has got such a different dynamic with the way the story is told compared to something like the following because of the way that the uh, you know the timeline is set up and all of that is is it, is it different different for you as an actress to be able to approach that differently or that really doesn't make a difference you know um i it really kind of depends on on what the shooting schedule is like i mean sometimes it can be so much done in such a short space of time that it's like a little whirlwind and you're holding on to a roller coaster ride and so you just got to go with the flow and other times it's where you have a little bit of space so you can really just delve into your character and and really sort of create. Um, so it just it just depends on on, on where it is. It, the great thing was that 24 Strut in London is basically my hometown, which was great because I was literally playing on my doorstep of where I grew up. Sure, sure. And, and, well, hey, listen, what a great chance to have a, as a tour guide. Hey, you, you know a place to eat. We have to go talk to Samina. She knows where everything good is. <laughs> right. But say, <laughs> catering was good on set, so that was always a blessing. <laughs> um, let me shift gears to the following because it's such a really, um, again, blown up as a really big, big uh, you know, cult fan base almost, uh, rallying behind Melissa Evans and Kevin Bacon. And what are some of the experiences that you really kind of have been able to draw away from uh, that show? You know, I um, I've always, always um, been completely inspired by Kevin's work. He's had such a range and an amazing diversity of different characters that he's he's been able to play. And actually, after working with him, it was I can just see why he's loved and why he works all the time. He was the most humbling actor that I've ever worked with. Just so reassuring. I remember my first day on set. And I was just very, very nervous. And he was just so reassuring and just so kind. And and it was like, wow, I know why you do amazingly well. You're just a top bloke. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's what everybody says about him too, right? Just so down to earth. And that's kind of how he approaches things. It doesn't matter if he's doing a show like this or he's doing, you know, a major motion picture. It really doesn't matter to him. It's just, he's a, it's a real blessing to be around him. That's incredible. What what was the uh, the sequence of events that kind of led you to be cast uh, on the following? Um, it's it's usually a similar process of of what happens in terms of of the audition pro- process, which is um, so when a when a show is 
in in the casting process, they usually put out breakdowns which my team will pick up on, and if there's anything relevant, they will pitch me. Uh-huh. So in a way, they're they're selling me, which is uh-huh. quite a funny funny analogy. Um, and then I get the material, and I try and be as creative as possible, and make some interesting choices, and and make the character lift off the just being words on a page and create a life and um and then just audition and and you know you always do the best that you can and and my and my theory is that i just if i was to have the job this is what i would do this is my intake and so i have a really fun time being creative and then i just have to let it go and just see what happens and with the following it, it worked out and with 24 it worked out so I was incredibly grateful. Well we're talking to Tamina Sunny about uh, some of her work obviously on 24 Live Another Day that has just uh, restarted. Uh, she has a role on that as well as the following which stars Melissa Evans and Kevin Bacon but I have to switch gears because folks you may not have realized this that we had such a flaming Brit on a wonderful movie one of my favorite movies of all time actually Aflac's Argo. Uh, Tamina, you have to first, I guess, explain to people who you are in Argo, so they'll know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I my scenes were with with Ben Affleck when he gets to the airport, and it's the whole scene where it almost changes pace in the movie. I feel because it's where they're trying to to board the the flight, and that's when things kind of start messing up. Where names aren't in the computers, so it's like the first denial of access and and you can see Kevin's face where he's um, Ben's face where he's where he's just like no you need to try again and um and so I I'm I'm the I'm the first flight person steward whatever you want to call me who's kind of like no I don't think that this is going to work and and right. so that was cool yeah I you're the, the uh, you weren't you weren't you weren't of those screeners at the end of the film when the intrigue is finally coming to a head and uh the group is trying to escape onto the plane and can't get onto the plane that kind of thing so here you are you're face to face with this guy he's this you know someone like Ben Affleck is larger than life and he's also the director what the what what does he how does he coach you into getting what he wants and then what is it like when you're live and he turns this acting and directing mode on and off like that you know that's a really interesting question because um before i i went on set i was asking the same thing like how does he do it and 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 how is his process and his approach so in my experience um as soon as i got on set he just came up and he was just like hello i was like hey (laughs) and just ended up having a full conversation with a lot of laughs and it was like oh we're on set when we have to work (laughs) so I guess his process is just to make you as as relaxed and as welcomed as possible and then um, talk about the scene and so obviously this is his him with his the the director hat on and um, once that sort of discussed and and camera angles and all that sort of hullabaloo it's almost like, okay, let's play. And it's like, great, let's play. And what I loved was that in between takes, even though everyone was relying on him for answers, he would just be this funny person and just kind of start talking and having like full-blown conversations. And it was like, oh, yes, no, 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 we've got to do another take. So uh, so it was almost like hanging out with a, a buddy on set, really. Wow, amazing. And, and just such a great, great film. And, and it I really has it. to be just just something that like many of us will just remember for a long time. I love history pieces anyway, but to find something that you can just make so much intrigue out of, it, it was just really done well. So, folks, you have to look a little closer next time and realize that that's Tamina and it's given Ben Affleck such a hard time. And you'll know, <laughs> you know who's behind this lovely voice that we're speaking with. And, you know, you have a great, I mean, obviously just, you know, even in this this all this stuff that's going on, you've been able to have such a great opportunity to work with so many great folks. You had Josh Hartnett, you work with in Singularity, and you work with uh, Clive Owen in Child of Men. Has there, has there been anyone that's really kind of given you a bit of advice or anything like that that you kind of like have kind of clung on to? You know, it's, it's interesting because every time I work with, I mean, first of all, I have to say that I am extremely, extremely blessed and, and grateful to have worked with the caliber of actors that I've had the opportunity to work with. 
And um, for me, every time I work with somebody, it, it's almost like being, being in education because I love watching what others do and learn from people. And I've had that opportunity where I've just been learning from the creme de la creme. Um, what, Children of What Men was one of my first projects. And um, one of my first days, I was on set with Michael Caine. And I remember this so well because he's such a charmer. And he, he comes up and he goes, you just remind me of my wife when she was younger. So, of course, I was like, oh, my God, that's really kind. Thank you. And um, so having, having a nice little conversation, he said, so here's three points that I've always remembered and I learned as a, as a young'un. And I was like, okay, great. What are they? And he went, always learn your lines, don't be late, and don't bump into furniture. And as long as you do all those three, you'll be absolutely fine. And I was like, uh, okay, great. That's fantastic. Yeah. Michael Caine has now given every actor that's listening the best advice he can have. Know your lines. Show up on time. Don't bump into anything. And it's just so simple because you think, oh, okay, but actually, you know, it, like you can just forget your lines or be late and ruin the whole schedule and and kind of like miss your marks and have to retake, which kind of like waste time. So those three simple sentences are really, really actually quite powerful. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm not sure what you can tell me of. I have to ask about two of your upcoming projects. I love to get a little sneak preview. So anything you can say would be helpful. But tell me a little bit about the Vatican Tapes. Um, so the Vatican Tapes is a horror thriller. Um, and it has a, a very religious sort of um, symbolic nature to it where I just feel it's going to have a class of its own. And the director, Mark Neveldine, I'm not sure if, you, if you're if you aware of his work, but he does real high-octane action stuff. Um, he did, like, the Crank movies with Jason Stratham. And, right. And, right. You, you know, so he's, he's bringing – this is the, one of his first horrors that he's ever directed – so he's bringing all of his other skills into some into a different genre. So I'm very excited about how it, how it, it's filmed and and then the storyline. It's got a caliber of great working actors. Dishman, I mean, I I just he blew me away when I first saw him on Gladiator, um, on Blood Diamond. So yeah, no, I think this is going to be going to be a bit of a scary one actually. Scary with an action director. It really definitely sounds like it's got a great, great spin to it. And then Already. very early stage, but you get this co-star with probably one of, I mean, just so people just love this guy. You get to co-star alongside um, uh, Jorge Garcia. You get, to, you get to co-star next to Hurley from Lost. <laughs> and running out of time is in pre-production. I know we're not really close to a whole lot of details on that, but uh, what was sort of the pitch on this film that you were able to tell people it's, it's moving forward on? Um, well, it's a, it's a storyline that's very, very close to a lot of people's hearts because it's about um, the Hurricane Katrina. And so, you know, I, I, I just feel that a lot of people will... I don't know. I just think it will live in their hearts. And um, Jorge is just a, a fantastic, fantastic actor. It's still at the development stages. But um, a friend of mine, John, wrote the script and, and um, said, you know, have a read. Tell me what you think. And I was like, this is fantastic. Wow, you're a great writer. And I was like, let me know if I can, if I can be a part of this. He was like, really? And so uh, that's, that's how the ball got moving there. That's fantastic, and uh, that's how it works sometimes. You know, you just you yeah. know, things just work out that way. So, you know, to me, it's just great to get a chance to meet and talk to you a little bit. And we're going to link. So, are you all plugged into all the uh, social media stuff? You can give out all your your Twitter and Facebook stuff. Are you in all that? I am all of yes. I'm involved in all of that. <laughs> What, what, what's, having a relationship what, with it all, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's become that, isn't it? It's almost kind of a weird, awkward, uh, uh, mandatory necessity in in the entertainment industry now. But what is that? What is your Twitter, you know, Facebook stuff that people can link? We'll link to absolutely. So my Twitter is at Tamina Sunny, and it's spelled T E H M I N A. Sunny is S for sugar, U N N Y, and. Um, my Facebook is Tamina Sunny, and so that's Twitter, Facebook, and 
Instagram's the same thing. I thought my name's so unusual. Why go create something else? <laughs> yeah, your parents thought sticking an extra H in there would just keep you calm. I know, which, which is so silent that it's like, uh, did I spell this right? Do, do, do you have brothers and sisters? Do they have odd spellings as well, if you do? Um, I have an older brother, and no, his his name's a lot more simple. Yeah, his, his name is, is simpler than mine, and wow. it is spelt the way it sounds. Wow. All right. Well, yeah, because we did it to our daughter. We have one daughter where we have a, you know, a, a weird spelling, and, and she, she doesn't really complain yet until she's older. Maybe when she's older, she'll start complaining, but so far, so good. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Never know, right? Well, such a blessing to talk to you, and you're going to look for Tamina Sunning. She's coming up in some episodes upcoming of 24. Live Another Day, um, a great resume of work, folks. We're going to link to her Facebook and her Twitter so you can follow her and keep up to date on all that. She's got some great stuff coming out. The Vatican Tape sounds like a great, exciting film, so maybe we'll be in touch around that time she can talk a little bit more fluently about what we can expect out of her character and that kind of thing. Tamina, thank you again for fitting us in. Brilliant. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.